Canada. Welcome back. Now the progressive rock band Life Signs are back with a new single ahead of an upcoming tour. The Five Piece are releasing the track Impossible from their second album, which has received a lot of critical acclaim after being made off the back of a crowdfunding campaign. Well, the two Johns from the group have been telling us more. First, let's take a listen to that single. an argument in a pub one evening where somebody said he didn't think there were any good new bands coming through. This was probably mid-2000s. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm sure there will be, you know, I'm sure that it will, will happen. And he said, well, if you think you can do something about it, go and do it, you know. And it was red rag to a bull to an extent. And mm. We'd been working, um, I'd been working with my own band, John Young Band, and um, the drummer from that band is Frosty Beetle. And uh, we chatted about it with the bass guitarist Nick Beggs from Stephen Wilson's band. And we put something together for the first album, and um, it, as you say, the, the critical acclaim was amazing. I mean, we were chuffed at what Hi-Fi magazine used it to test Hi-Fi's with, you know, we thought <laughs> it all seemed to work quite well. And then um, we kind of moved on from there thinking about live and taking it out. And Nick had hev pretty hefty commitments with uh, both Steve Hackett and Steve Wilson. He only works with people called Steve. And, um, <laughs> I only work with people called John. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Go. Um, and um, I work with Ed Poole, John's brother in the Bonnie Tyler mm -hmm. band. And um, so Ed recommended that John should come along. And he fitted like a glove. It was just love at first sight, basically. Yeah. And then um, we were working with a guitarist called Nick Osono. Who's, who's a wonderful guy, a uh, great guitarist who also worked with Steve Wilson. And now we've come to the format that we have with Dave Bainbridge um, playing guitar and keyboards. And Dave works with the Straubs and Iona and people like that over the years. So it's, it, again, everyone has quite hefty track history, really. Yeah. So that's, that's kind yeah. of how it works. Were you, all, were you all friends beforehand or did you sort of come together? Well, I mean, uh, well, the thing is, is that John knew my brother, um, Ed because they uh, play together in the Bonnie Tyler group, so they're in the, the band for that, and they, you've known each other for... 20 years. Yeah, yeah 20 yeah, years yeah. or something, uh, and we'd never met before, but... Um, Ed kept uh, you a secret. Yeah, he did, yeah. I think, didn't you ask Ed to do it? And he said, oh, I don't want to do it, but I reckon my brother would. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, like, exactly. so it was yeah. just yeah, one of those yeah. things, really. But, um, but yeah, it just, it just really worked, you know. It was, um, I, we just felt that we kind of understood one another and you know and, uh, and our work ethic just seems to click it's yeah. It's scary, really. It's like we've known each other for 20 years. You yeah, know, course, very, much so. So. very much so. I but, think that's yeah. the beauty of the whole thing. There's, there's an element of... We, we felt that uh, in, in most kinds of music, the song had kind of taken a back seat. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. wanted to bring songs back into long pieces and short pieces, but just yeah. have something mm -hmm. melodic and beautiful and that says something, maybe some lyrics that might mean something. Not necessarily putting mm -hmm. forward a point of view, but just maybe making people think. Mm -hmm. And that's... You know, that's what I always loved about music that I grew up with in the in the in the 70s and 80s and whatever. Yeah. And um, so it's it's nice to be given that opportunity. Um, yeah. We've been very mm. fortunate. I mean, the first album, um, Steve Hackett from Genesis. We approached him. We approached Taish Van Leer from Focus. Yeah. And um, they just went, yeah, love to. You know. And it's really weird. We were talking about this the other day that w the peers that we had in those days loved the band. The problem that we now have is getting to their audiences to, to show them what we do. You know, yeah. and that's, uh, that's where you come in. So exactly. That's, that's yeah. <laughs> is the band then, on that sense, in terms of the music you make, a, a labour of love? Because we were talking before we started about how busy your schedules are, because all the things you have to do, all the other sort of bands and people you work for, like Bonnie Tyler, for example, which you're still mm. touring with. Mm. So coming back is kind of. You don't have to do it, but you feel like you have to. Yeah, well, it's building, you know. It's a, it's a building concern, you know, and, it, and we're going to continue to do it and, and see where it'll take us, really, you know. So it's um, it's not like a particularly kind of like a side project to other stuff we're doing. It's something that is a passion, but we really want to give it the best shot we can and uh, hopefully 
go somewhere with it, really, because mm. um, because I mean the song is king mm. with what with what we do, and we're not kind of genre specific as well. I don't. I mean, I, I've never really liked that the fact that you get labelled as mm. a, a, a prog rock band or a hip hop band or anything. I, I don't. I, I don't see why all this stuff can't just. Um, live alongside yeah. each other. So, yeah, destroy all genres. <laughs> That's the message. The two Johns there from Knife Signs, they will be at the Half Moon in Putney on the 11th of March next week. And their new single, Impossible, is out now.